Welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. This is Shane with CodeKarate.com, and today we're on episode number 22. We're going to continue on with module development, and this will be the last day we go over some module development concepts for a while. So if you haven't watched yesterday's episode, and I think even the day before, we were going over a module we were writing called Form Example. The first day we walked through how to create a database table within a Drupal 7 module. And yesterday we walked through how to create this example form and get it to actually insert data into the database. Today we're going to go through how to build a custom page that just lists the results of this in a table format. And keep in mind that as I've mentioned in previous episodes, this is a very primitive, simple example. You'd probably want to use just content types and views to make this a lot quicker to build and uh, just more flexible from you know all angles. But this example co touches on a bunch of core concepts that you'll need in order to build more complex Drupal modules. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come back into our form example module file. And this is all things that we have written yesterday. And I'm going to add another permission because we're going to create another page on the site. And I'm going to call it Access Form Examples Submissions. And then we're going to add another menu item. And we'll make the URL just be called form-submissions. And we want the access argument to match up here to the actual permission we just created. So we're going to go ahead and paste that in there. And we're not going to have any page arguments in this case. And our page callback is just going to be form example submissions, which we will come down here and create. We'll go below all these other form functions we created yesterday. And we're going to create our new function. Okay, so now that we have a very basic outline here of what we're going to do, we actually get to make the query that's going to go out to the database, pull all the form submissions, and then print them out. So a couple things here. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the Drupal database API. So we go to the database API page on drupal.org. And this is going to have a whole bunch of information that's going to show you different ways that you can pull data from the database. Uh, the first way, I mean, if you just go into this general concepts, it's going to go through a whole bunch of things, talking about just basic concepts of the database, how to configure the database, the static queries. That's where we're going to take the first look. And we're going to use uh, the second version here. And I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. Uh, this is actually using dbQuery, which is just a function. This is used pretty heavily in Drupal 6 modules as well. So it actually allows you to write the SQL that you want to use to pull data from the database. In this case, I'm using a MySQL database. But as long as you write fairly, you know, standard SQL it's going to work it should work across most databases um, you'll notice that there's little brackets around the actual database table and that's uh, anytime you want to have database prefixes inside your Drupal site that will allow for that to work so we're going to come down into our code here and we're going to do a couple things in this form example submissions 
function that we started to create. I'm going to just start by saying a variable called results equals db query, and I'm going to run a select. I'm just going to select everything from form example. You'll notice I add those brackets around the table. This is the very basic, simple way to do it. Uh, I'm also going to show you a slightly different version, but we'll start with this. We're also going to then create two variables. Since we're going to output things in a table format, we need a header. So I'm going to create a header variable, and it's going to be an array. And it's going to contain all of the different header rows that I want. So I'm going to have one for ID field. And notice I'm running these through the T function. One for my number. One for my text field. And one for my text. And I'm also going to create a rows variable that's going to hold all the rows based on this data that I pulled back from the form example table. We are then going to loop through the results. And this is just simple looping through a database result set. So you'll notice I just say for each results as result. And then I am going to get each record one at a time. This is going to be as an object. So it's going to pull back as an object from the database table. In this case, since I'm selecting everything, it's going to be based on the name of the fields. So for instance, if I access fe underscore id, I'll get that field. My number, I will get that field. You can, of course, in here, you could do a print statement like this, if you would like. And it's going to loop through and print out all of those so you can get a better look at it. Uh, I'm going to keep things moving here, and I'm just going to go rows, add a new item to the row, and I'm going to say results, feid, results, my number, results, my text field, and results, my text. And those are just all the columns from that database table. It's just going to continually loop through this and add each item from here as a row. Now we're going to call a Drupal theme function. I'm going to say return theme. And this is built into Drupal, and it's just a table function. And it takes two parameters. In this case, we need to wrap the parameters in an associate, associate array. And I'm going to have as one index is going to be header. And it's going to be my header variable. And rows is going to be my rows variable. And that documentation, if you look for theme table on Drupal.org, it's going to have a whole bunch of information about what it does, how it's set up. You can then, of course, override how this is printed in your theme if you need to. Uh, there's In the comments, there's some examples. I basically took that one right out of the comments. It's pretty self-explanatory once you use it a few times. So now that we have this, we can go ahead and save it. What we're going to need to do is come over here, and I'm going to clear my cache because we added a new menu item. So at minimum, we need to make sure we clear the menu cache here. I'm just going to go ahead and clear everything. Now if I go to form-submissions, you can see it works. I got my one form submission that I created, if I had more, it would just continually list them. Pretty basic. I'm now going to go ahead and show you a different way to pull the data. If you come back to the database API, and you can look at dynamic queries. This is going to allow you to chain different conditions, fields, and just a whole bunch of different query options together to build a dynamic query. Uh, a couple things about this. It's not quite as efficient as just writing out the SQL yourself. It has to do some extra processing, so it's not quite as fast. You'll, of course, you know, you'll never actually notice the difference. It's milliseconds of difference. But just keep that in mind that it's not quite as efficient, but it is much more flexible. So you really have to determine for yourself. There's kind of people 
in the Drupal world on both sides of the fence, whether you should do one way or the other. And it's really, in my opinion, it's up to you, which you prefer. I, I sometimes like writing SQL myself, but I'll also use DB select if the situation calls for it. So I'm going to go ahead and just comment out the first example, and I'm going to write a second way to do this. This is going to do exactly the same thing, just using the two different options. So I'm going to select from the form example table, and I give it just an alias of FE. And then I am going to go ahead and, in this case, I'm going to define specific fields. You use the alias for my table, that's FE, and give it an array of fields. I want FE ID, my number, my text field, and my text. And these are pulling straight from the uh, from the actual database table based on the fields that I field names that I provided when I created the table in the install file. I'm also going to chain on a range of zero to fifty, just so you can see how that would work. And I can also chain on an order by, and in this case, I'll say order by F E I D. I think that's how that works. Let's double check that. Okay, so I need the actual prefix in front, dot, whatever the the name of it is. So fe dot feid. And I could have it ascending or descending, but if I leave it blank, it'll just assume the default ascending. The next step then is to go ahead and execute this query. And now I save it, I come back here, I refresh. I missed something here. Oh, this should be fields. I refresh and everything works. Same as before, just two different ways to, uh, to go about pulling out the data. As you can see, this is a much simpler, shorter way to do it. Of course, I'm saying I just want everything. Here I'm defining specific fields and a diff couple different options, but this would allow you to, of course, chain different options onto this query before you execute it. So I would try out both. Definitely look through the documentation on the database API. And the last point I want to make is right here, I am just completely displaying whatever is entered into the database. If you're any type of security expert or know anything about security, you'll realize that that is not, not a safe thing to do. If I were to insert some you know, questionable markup into, the, into my form, there is possibility that I could cause some you know, cross-site scripting type of issues. So you want to go ahead and read or look at writing secure code on drupal.org. They talk about the check plane or check markup function. And anytime you're going to be outputting data onto the screen, you should be running it through some type of sanitation function that Drupal provides. In this case, I'm going to use check plane for the ID field. Of course, that one's just pulled from the database as a serial ID. You don't really need to run it through check plane. And I'm going to do check markup for the my text, which would allow, if I went into my input or my text formats on my Drupal site and I set the default to filtered HTML, or I, I could go ahead and you can see the second parameter is the format. So if I wanted to allow in the my text text area, HTML, or certain types of tags to be allowed and displays HTML, I could do that. Uh, I would just read up on the check markup function and the check plane function. And it's just make sure anytime you're going to be displaying data to the screen, you want to run, run it through one of these functions to help prevent uh, cross-site scripting and all those things that you don't want to happen on your site. So as you can see, I refreshed, nothing changed, but know that these functions are there to help and make your code much more secure. And that's it for this time on the Daily Dose of Drupal. Next time we're going to switch gears and make the videos a little shorter again and go back to some more basic things. 
So thanks for listening and watching. Follow me on Twitter at smthomas3 and go to codecrowdy.com and sign up for the newsletter. Thanks for watching.